we're going to take a look at how Timeline PI, the Intelligent Process Mining Solution, will enable users to visually recreate their processes from start to finish with just a few mouse clicks, allowing them to drill in and identify all of the different activities that have occurred along the way. Now, the data set we're going to be working with today is representative of tracking patients throughout their stay in emergency department. Now, if you think about engaging in a process reengineering or a compliance check or just general maintenance of a business process, you really need to have an understanding of what the current state process is prior to embarking on that type of a project. This way you can benchmark along the way and also quickly uncover the areas where you need to focus, giving you the most return on your time and investment. Now we'll take a look at exactly how Timeline PI can uncover those areas of inefficiencies and allow you dr to drill in and even look for things like root cause. We'll begin by taking a look at the schema module. Now this will allow us to visualize the dominant path that patients are most commonly taking throughout our emergency department. So we'll start by allowing the tool to take what it believes to be the most important milestone events as a part of this ED workflow. What we have here is the full list of all the different possible events or activities that have occurred with patients in the ED. And by clicking Select Default Milestones, we'll run some advanced statistical analysis and specifically just pick out those events that are most commonly and reliably occurring at the same point in this process. Okay, so I picked out nine events as milestones, which is great. We can always customize this, so I'll add a few more to the model. Where we're deciding to admit, we'll include, and maybe where providers are being assigned. So we've customized it a bit, and we'll have it generate the schema for us. So we're looking at that most common schema based on the milestones which I essentially said that I care about. And the nice thing here is this is not just a static Visio diagram. When I choose to save this, it now becomes a monitoring tool. So you can see on the thickness of the lines here represents where more patients have gone one path or taken one transition versus another. And if we don't want to look at it by patient volume, but more so by the time spent in any one area of the process, I can change the metric. And now the line thickness represents our average duration between any two nodes as a part of this process schema. So we're starting to understand where the bulk of the time is being spent as a part of these patient processes. The last thing to show you here is the ability to animate this. So when I turn this on, each circle represents a patient or a group of patients, and we can see actually as they're progressing through our emergency room where things start to slow down, where they're bunching up and backing up in certain places, they're actually bottlenecking. As they're changing colors, these are patients that have aged. They're, they've been in the emergency department for a longer period of time. Now I can pause this at any time, and if I want to drill in to on any one of these patients that I think is of interest, for example, this one that seems to be slowly looping backwards, I can select any one of these circles and drill in and get very detailed information on exactly what happened with this patient, in what order, and at what time. All right, so I can see who was associated with it, all the different events that occurred, so I can go from that macro process level to a very detailed view on any one of these given outliers if, I, if they are of interest. So using this schema, we can very quickly uncover where we've got certain inefficiencies such as bottlenecks occurring as a part of patient flow through the emergency department. We can pick out where time is most largely being spent as a part of these patient processes in case we need to hone in in any one area of the process. And we can also drill in and get very detailed information if we have a need to go down to that level if we uncover an outlier that is of interest and get very detailed information about that patient stay. Now once we have this general schema understanding of our process, we want to introduce the amount of variability in, the, in this data set and using the path analysis. So we'll switch over to that module. What you're looking at here is a frequency distribution of all of the different possible execution paths or series of steps that have occurred as a part of patients going through this emergency department. So the most commonly followed path is going to show up here to the left, and you'll see decreasing numbers as you go. 
Now you can see clearly where steps are being skipped. We're going back to complete certain events, or maybe you're even pinballing back and forth between certain activities. And all the different variations are here for us. So what you've got along the top are the number of patients that have executed one series of steps versus another relative to the events listed along the left. So from a compliance perspective, this is very quickly going to allow us to point out areas where we're not doing things in the expected order. We're skipping over steps that maybe we feel we should be completing or not doing them in order. We can also look at this from a timing perspective so we can see exactly how long is it taking us to process patients based on our average duration of any one execution path or the next and allow us to do some comparative analysis against any one of these. We can also visualize this a bit differently. If we want to look at this not in a nonlinear fashion, but from more of that schema perspective, I can change the visualization, and now I can look at this from more of a branching and loopback perspective with this same frequency distribution based on our schema model and on down the line. The last thing to show you here is the ability to not only look at this from a compliance lens or a timing lens, but now introducing cost into the situation and actually being understand what is the average cost when we process a patient one series of steps versus the next and on down the line. And if anything stands out here, something like a high cost variant or possibly something that looks risky or non-compliant, what we can actually do is select any series of events or paths, in this case multiple that I've deemed to be too high cost, apply them as a filter. Now when I come back and look at my timelines view, I'm looking at a very small subset of my overall patient population, but it's just those that I've deemed to be either risky or too, or too costly for my liking. And now what I can do is drill a bit further into this specific subset to understand where are these patients most commonly coming through, who is associated with it, where are the trends in the data that, that are going to point me to where I can focus my efforts to fix this issue that I've uncovered. And we can use our breakdown mechanism to, to spot these types of trends. So based on these cost, 171 costly patients, this is how it breaks down by the different providers that have been assigned. And there are a few doctors that stand out. Maybe we would want to go have a conversation with a few of these guys. We can also take a look at it, maybe not by doctors, by is there any correlation to the type of lab that's being ordered as a part of these patient stays. And I can break these costly patients down by the labs. And here it's relatively interesting. There's a couple of labs that stand out from the rest as to being assigned to these high cost patient workflows. And now I can maybe have a conversation with a lab, te lab tech to understand a bit more about why they're occurring. But you see how we can very quickly and simply uncover these areas of inefficiency or possible concern, hone in on them, and then uncover things like root cause to give us the idea of where to best focus our efforts in remediating or fixing that process.